We don't want you to miss out on any Pittsburgh Steelers talk video here at Chat Sports, but the vast majority of you actually do. Less than 16% of you have your notifications set to all, meaning when we push out a video on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc., you're not going to get a notification for each one. So get that changed. Turn those notifications from personalized to all. Click the bell icon when you, where you're first subscribed to make that change right now. Tom Downey here once again for Pittsburgh Steelers Talk by Chat Sports. Back with the latest rumors and a brief news item that, frankly, I don't think that many of you guys care about, but we're going to hit it anyway. First up is the Mackay Becton trade rumors. Back once again as Bleacher Report put together bold predictions for the top, quote-unquote, NFL trade targets as part of that article. Mackay Becton to the Steelers for a pretty hefty package for a by low, which is what Bleacher Report pitched Becton as. We'll break that down in a minute. The Jets allegedly are nonplussed with Mackay Becton at this point. Here's what Bleacher Report real kind of condensing down all the different reports out there. Becton showed up to minicamp overweight. Connor J. Hughes of the Athletics that he was pushing 400 pounds with a seemingly with a seeming lack of motivation that has coaching staff puzzled on how to proceed. WFAN's Boomer Esiason said the Jets could even cut Becton if they believe he won't perform at a high level due to his poor conditioning and lack of reps after a nine-month absence. Now, last year, Becton was, approaching, or was pushing past 400 pounds. In 2020, he was actually healthy. 2021, he was injured, overweight. There were issues there. He played pretty well when he was healthy in 2020 for a first-round pick. Also note on Boomer Esiason's claim of cutting him, it's not, not going to happen. They eat a ton of dead money. They would absolutely trade him first before cutting him. That's simply not going to happen. And well, that's Boomer, I, I guess, being a Boomer. Now, the Steelers fit for Becton. If they believe he can become the guy that the first, the first round pick was, the Jets believe he could be that rare blend of unbelievable size and great athletic ability. Becton, if he plays well, is an obvious upgrade over Dan Moore at left tackle. But, of course, there are rather significant doubts because it takes a lot for a team to shop a top 15 pick like Mekhi Becton, not even into the third year, truly, of his campaign. That is almost a, God, do we want that guy if he's being shopped? Here was Bleach Report's trade idea. Now, they pitched this as buy low, and I would not consider a second and a fourth round pick as a buy low value. We talked about Makai Becton, if you've been subscribed for a while, leading up to the draft, because I thought if the Jets take like an Evan Neal in round one, that means they trade Becton and roll with George Fant, etc. But... That's not the route they went. So I am not sold on them moving on from Becton. I had pitched a second and a day three pick, so we're kind of in a similar boat trade value-wise of what I think it would cost to get Becton. So assuming that trade, second and a fourth, is the right value, do you want to trade for Makai Becton? Be honest with me in the comment section. Maybe you like Dan Moore. Maybe you just don't like Makai Becton. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, it's perfect timing. Take advantage of it. While the ad plays, head down there, type in Y for yes or N for no. As I kind of alluded to, I do not see the Jets trading away Makai Becton. I think they owe it to themselves as an organization to give him one more year. See if he can stay healthy, be in shape, and play well as he has been training plenty with Duke Mannyweather, one of the premier offensive line coaches in the NFL. The Jets also don't have other options. Uh... Even if George Fant wins the left tackle job, which is a battle, quote-unquote, which got to put the other one on the right side, the loser, he spent a fourth, mid-ish, late fourth-round pick on Max Mitchell. Chuma Odoga has been a disappointment. You trade away Becton, you're not making your team any better, and that's why I don't foresee the Jets moving on from Becton at this point. To a different uh, lineman, that is defensive lineman Montrevis Adams, or I mean, Montrevious Adams. The Steelers' defensive line coach expects Adam to push for a starting job this year. Obviously, even though he's injured much of last year, Tyson Lulu is the favorite to start at the nose guard spot. Although I do wonder if the Steelers are going to plan on at least a little bit more 
typical four-man front looks, which is what most teams do anyway, even three-four schemes because when you're in nickel and dime, you're using four-man fronts. Adams was re-signed this offseason on a pretty cheap deal. Here's what defensive line coach Carl Dunbar said. Quote, I see him competing for that starting nose tackle position. Montrevis has done a great job learning our stuff on the run as far as coming in late last year. He's a very athletic kid. He can hold the point and he can run. We'll spend some more time on Adams and his potential starting uh, abilities. But first, the Steelers t-shirt combo pack is still available from our friends over at Fanatics. That link will be in the comments section and the description. It's chatsports.com slash P-I-T combo. That's Pit. Combo. The two t shirt deal is 30 bucks. You have a tough time, if we're being honest, finding one officially licensed NFL shirt or gear item for 30 bucks. You can get two of them, and they're fantastic shirts as well. Officially licensed gear from Fanatics. Head over to chatsports.com slash pit combo. I'll put that link once again in the comments section and in the description so you can click and buy your t shirt combo pack today. All right, back to Adams. He did come in late for Pittsburgh, and I thought flashed a little bit for a team that had dealt with some injuries along the defensive line. He has never been that productive in his NFL career. And getting back to my early days, as uh, I still refer to as NFL draft nerd more so than like media scout, but that's what it is, all the same. I loved Adams coming out of Auburn. I thought he was going to be so good, and that has been a colossal L for me at this point, which is... uh, It happens in the end, but maybe he can redeem himself in Pittsburgh. And Adams is not your typical build for a nose race. He's a little bit lighter. He's only about 305 in terms of uh, of his weight, his listed weight in the end. But in the modern-day NFL, even three, four teams, they tend to value more quickness and speed. The depth chart as it shakes out right now with some blending of nose guards and your five techniques, your three, four defensive ends, Cam Hayward, Larry Ogunjobi, Tyson Alualu, DeMarvin Leal is going to get a chance to make an impact, Isaiah Loudermilk as well, Chris Wormley, and Adams behind Alualu could be very intriguing. One quick note, the news item, by the way, I kind of teased off the top. Uh, You don't see Daniel Archibong anymore. He is now on the reserve retired list, so he's not a member of these theaters anymore, although it does open up a roster spot for the organization as a result. So when it comes to Adams, do you want him to start or do you want him to be a bench backup or maybe not even making a team altogether? Type S for you want him to start or B for you want him on the bench. Let's talk Cam Sutton now. USA Today picked the most underrated player on each NFL team and Sutton was the pick for the Steelers and I'm pretty on board with this one by the way I've long liked Sutton I think he's a versatile piece for you in in the defensive backfield can play outside can play nickel he's a quality player if not a premier star at the cornerback spot here's what USA Today wrote quote while everyone is talking about the Steelers re-signing Akella Witherspoon adding Levi Wallace Cameron Sutton remains the most consistent and versatile defender or defensive back, excuse me, on the roster. He's also got the most experience in the system among the team's top three and his ability to play both inside and outside cornerback, as well as working in in as a safety in sub packages, is going to make him invaluable this season. Sutton, from a production standpoint, did not have his best campaign, a little bit high in the completion percentage, a little bit high on the yards. He was targeted a bit more frequently as an outside corner for the organization, but this is not not bad numbers either, and I've actually liked him a little bit better as a nickel than a true outside corner, and my guess is that's where we'll see him play a little bit more frequently this year with the additions of Witherspoon and Wallace. So I like Sutton as the most underrated Steelers player. But I want to hear from you guys in the comments section. Who do you believe of all the players on the Steelers roster is the most underrated guy? It's obviously not TJ Watt, but drop a name for me in the comments section. One last note on Le'Veon Bell, and I wonder if this is the end of his NFL career. As we've discussed before on the show, which you all know because you're subscribed, of course, Bell was going to fight Adrian Peterson at the end of this month in a boxing match, and Bell says he's not playing football at all this year. Quote, boxing is something that, you know, they always say it's something you can't play boxing. 
Last year, I almost sat out the whole year to try and focus on boxing because I kind of knew that was what I wanted to transition to. This year, I know I'm not going to be playing because I want to focus on boxing. That is probably it then for Lev Bell's career. Uh, there's not very many players who take a year off and make a return, especially at the running back position. He'll be 31 next year, having taken a year off and not remotely being the same impactful player he was at his peak when he was a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So it's not an official retirement for Bell, but the writing is on the wall. So with that in mind, should Bell be in the Steelers' ring of, on of honor? Producer Sam was like, absolutely not. I probably agree, but we're a show based on democracy, so sound off. One for yes or zero for no. His production, by the way, was impressive early on in his career. The first five years he spent with the Steelers, this was one of the best backs in the entire NFL. The problem is that after three All-Pro uh, seasons as a member of the— or excuse me, two All-Pros, one Pro Bowl, my bad— the production f absolutely fell off a cliff. He was in that age 26 season. He held out the entire year, and it cost him. And because of that, I, I don't know if five prime years is enough to get Lev Bell into the Steelers' ring of honor. I am totally down from to sign the old one-day contract and retire as a member of the Steelers, but ring of honor is probably a little bit too high of a of a push of an argument as far as I am concerned. No disrespect meant, but the Ring of Honor is supposed to be built around the, the top end, the key players for these steers, and I don't think Lev Bell quite qualifies.